You're taking a later train. Well, why aren't you taking the train you're supposed to take? Well, Mom, things got all complicated, and, and it's too late to take it now. I'll tell you all about it when I get home. All right. And take a cab when you get here. Yes, dear. Yes. Goodbye. Karen in some kind of trouble? No, she's just taking a later train. She'll tell us all about it when she gets home. Boy, she must be in real big trouble if she's afraid to tell you over the phone. Mimi, wash. A wipe. <laughs> Instead of words, I should change the tickets. You did get them, didn't you? Well, yeah, I got them, but... For what? Well, you see, our original tickets were excursion fare. You know, a special rate. And? And the tickets for the later train were regular price. And I only had enough money for one full fare. So? Well, so it's simple. I bought you a half fare ticket. <laughs> We're just going to have to figure some way to convince them you're under 13. <laughs> stronger than dirt. Ray Jack's laundry detergent is stronger than dirt. Who says Ajax is stronger than dirt? The National Cotton Council wanted to know. So Ajax was tested. Result, no other leading detergent got clothes cleaner, whiter than Ajax with Ultramarine Plus. Now the National Cotton Council agrees. New Ajax laundry detergent is stronger than dirt. I can't seem to remember my lines. This morning you even forgot to brush your teeth. Oh, Mom, I just don't like the taste of that toothpaste. It's meant to reduce cavities. I still get some. Why not start, Linda, on Colgate? The good tasting anti-cavity toothpaste. Look, when Colgate was compared with the best-known fluoride, research reported in the Journal of Dentistry for Children confirmed Colgate unsurpassed in reducing new cavities. Get anti-cavity Colgate today. I'm sorry, Charlotte, but I will not get on that train in your 12-year-old sister's clothes. How can we borrow the money from Mrs. Sloat? She took the day off when she knew we were leaving. I don't even know where to get in touch with her. Why do I have to use the half-fare ticket? Why don't you? Karen... I wasn't the one who spent my emergency money on a new dress. And I wasn't the one who spilled the hot chocolate all over it. And I wasn't the one who... Forget it. <laughs> Maybe if I wire my parents, they might send me the money. Wouldn't get here in time. The train leaves in 20 minutes. Oh, come on. Do you want to spend the rest of your life in Idaho? <laughs> Walk like a kid, not like Natalie Wood. I forgot how. Walk, don't be. <laughs> this is the worst thing that ever happened to me. I'll never get away with it. Oh, yes, you will. Why, you're the best actress in the whole school. You tell the conductor the truth when he comes. Are you out of your skull? You want to get thrown off the train? It's wrong cheating the railroad. Send them the money when you get home. <laughs> oh, here comes the conductor. Here, take this and I'll do the talking. <laughs> May I see your tickets, please? Oh, sure. All right, one and a half to Los Angeles. How old is your sister? My sister's just 11 years old. <laughs> Twelve. In fact, you know, she's tall for her age. Our whole family's tall. And dumb, too. <laughs>
said. They're in the club car. Now hurry up. You've got to change your dress before some stupid cooks grab them up. It's crazy. We'll get caught. I'll stay here. Are you going to ruin the whole trip? Listen, the conductor already collected your ticket. He's probably gone to bed or something. Now, come on, you'll change in the ladies' room. I didn't know they'll even talk to us. Well, they're just sitting there waiting to talk to girls. I mean, you can just tell. It's the way they, they cross their legs or something. I mean, like you just knew Cary Grant was going to talk to Doris Day when he, when he walked into that automat. Come on. <laughs> Excuse me, is someone sitting there? Uh, no, no one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Drop your magazine. Oh! Oh! Yes, I did. <laughs> see you skating uh, up at the lodge? Did you? I guess we did. Well, it's a small world, you might say. You might. I guess you might. <laughs> <laughs> well? Well what? I mean, you said you saw me skating. What'd you think of my figure eights? Your figure eights? <laughs> You wouldn't be putting me on, would you? Oh, no. Karen and I, we both thought they were... wild. Karen? Is that your name? I'm Charlotte Burns, and this is Karen Scott. We go to Beverly. Well, hi. I'm Joe Slater, and this is Tom Ingersoll. We go to Cal. <sighs> you actually fell right down in the ice? I was leading the competition. I not only lost the race, but I dampened my spirits as well. <laughs> uh, your ticket, miss? Oh, you have my ticket, conductor. <laughs> what space, miss? Uh, car 210, seats 14 and 16. Sorry, miss, that space is taken by this young lady and her sister. Fair and a half to loss... <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had anyone try and pull that one on me since 1948 on the old CB&O. A midget and his wife. What's this all about? I'm afraid, young lady, you're going to have to pay a full fare. I don't have it, sir. You don't have it? Well, you... See, I bought this real slinky dress with my emergency money, and... and I spilled hot chocolate all over it and ruined it. And I had to buy a half-fare ticket. I'm sorry. It was all my fault. Oh, please don't throw me off the train, sir. <laughs> I don't know anybody in Idaho. <laughs> This is Cobb Residence. What's Karen gloomed up now? Hi, Mr. Scott. I'm holding a couple of kids out in my cap. One of them says she lives here. What you holding them for? Ransom? It's a little matter of $6.90 cab fare. You can't take chances. You take kids like that, you let them go in the house for the fare. Half the time they don't come back, you're left pushing doorbells all over the neighborhood. <laughs> you can come in now, kids! <laughs> there you are. Oh, thanks a lot, Mr. Scott. Oh, honey. Hi, honey. Oh, hi, Mom. Everything all right? No, it was just awful. Who are you? Oh, oh, this is Joe Slater. This is my dad and my mom and my sister Mimi. Hi, Joe. Hello, Pleased Joe. Pleased to meet you. If it hadn't been for Joe, I wouldn't be here. For heaven's sake, what happened? Oh, Dad, don't put that away. I owe Joe $21.74. <laughs> that would be uh, too rude of me to inquire just why you owe this young man $21.74. Well, you see, sir. Yes. Gosh, it, it is kind of hard to explain, isn't it? <laughs> Mother, 
Arthur, it was just awful. It really was. I was just miserable all the time. And if Joe hadn't paid the rest of my fare, I, I would have just died right there in the club car. This is the first time we let you take a trip by yourself, and you get into all this ridiculous trouble. But, Mom, you... Karen, don't... you go up to your room and stay there until I come up and talk to you. All right, Dad. Steve, she's very upset about this whole thing. And since when has being upset over something you've done wrong gone out of style? Mom, is it okay if I go next door and have supper at Marianne Hanser's? Why do you want to do that? Well, I don't like being around when you're being mean to Karen. I'm not being mean, I'm being fair. Well, I don't like being around when you're being fair either. <laughs> Amy, we're all having dinner together. Yes, Daddy. Finished? Just about. Dad, this weekend was just about the dumbest thing I ever did. I'm really sorry. I know. You've said that all through dinner. But I am. Well, I guess it was quite an experience. But uh, have you learned anything from it? I learned not to listen to people like Charlotte. Oh, that's convenient, isn't it? Blame it all on Charlotte. But you were the one who thought she was the neatest girl you'd ever met. You bought that dress, and you were the one who tried to come back half fair. Hmm? Guess I should have listened to you when you said I shouldn't go. Maybe. Honey, remember when I let you get your driver's license? Mm hmm Well, you took a test. There were certain signs that you had to recognize. Signs that told you when to slow down, that warned you of merging traffic or uh, dangerous intersections, right? Well, that's all your mother and I are trying to do. Get you to recognize the danger signs so that you'll know which is the right road, when to slow down, when to put your brakes on, when to stop. Believe me, honey, if, if you don't pay any attention to those signs out on the freeway or in life, you're going to get clobbered. Yes, Dad. I want you to uh, pay me back for that ticket out of your allowance. And uh, suppose we put you in dry dock for a while. Fair? Fair. You know, Dad, it's funny. You and Mom spend half your life telling me things, and, and I spend half of mine not listening. Well, in the future, maybe if uh, we talked a little less and you listened a little harder, we just might make it. It's a deal, Dad. Okay. Good night, honey. Good night, Dad. Pleasant dream. She's a doll, she's a queen, she's a tantalizing teen, and Karen is her name. They call her Karen. At a party, she's a stomper and a rock and roll and romper. Everybody's glad she came. Hey, that's Karen! She sets her hair with great precision. It's her favorite indoor sport. And by the light of television, she can even write a book report. There is no one greater north or south of the equator. Karen's always in a world. She's alarming but disarming and a really very charming mother.